Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 382, the Holy Week edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. It's the 27th of March, 2018. It's Tuesday in Holy Week. All right, Gavin, welcome back to the program. How are things going over in England? Well, they're, they're always very exciting, Kevin. The, 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 the news is a never-ending series of apocalyptic disasters, <laughs> reminding us that we need to pray, Maranatha, Lord, come back quickly and rescue us from our stupidity, our veniality, our revenge. So it, it, England is, is we, we lapse from self-made crises to this latest crisis with the, with the, the poisoning of Russian spies. And... Um, uh, anti-Semitism in the in the Labour Party, um, crisis in the National Health Service, cars that can't work in the snow. It's all been very exciting in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, you guys are still getting uh, bad weather. Obviously, we're getting horrible weather over here. Um, I wanted to add a new feature to Unscripted called Viewer Mail, uh, where people send an email uh, with questions or comments and stuff like that. Uh, we get about you know five or ten a week that are just confirmations. Oh, mm. you guys doing great, or you were absolutely wrong about blah 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 blah. And you know, I, in, in general, I don't you know handle a lot of the, the, those. But I got an interesting one from one of our viewers, um, and I'm going to read it. This I'm surprising you with this. So yeah, okay. It says Gavin's Palm Sunday sermon is nothing short of brilliant. Which you knew. It's, that's not surprising. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, this person says, is it true that he was a chaplain uh, to Queen Elizabeth? Um, what is he doing now uh, besides doing <laughs> eye surgeries, uh, recording morning prayer, and wearing purple shirts? Uh, I don't mean to be offensive, but is there anything <laughs> real over there for him to be a bishop of? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a quite little, you know, email that we could we could take care of. Um, yeah, I, I, people need to know you have a, a side ministry on the internet. W tell us about your ministry. Well, first of all, <laughs> what a wonderful email! <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I actually know this person; she's delightful. So, and what's on the button with all those questions? They yes. all deserve a very good answer. <laughs> Um, so first of all, I don't often wear purple shirts, uh, but but be that as um, uh, may, I'm very I'm nobody could be more surprised about the place God has brought me to, and I certainly didn't choose it for myself. Uh, I thought I was doing quite nicely within the Anglican system, uh, and um, uh, I looked forward to a, an honourable retirement. Indeed, I remember thinking, if I get to be a chaplain to the Queen until I'm 70, I was appointed so early, I'll be one of the most prestigious, you know, all that nonsense. And meanwhile, what do I do? I have a small pension, just enough to pay the bills from my uh, previous life, and uh, and God spoke to me and said, do things on the internet mm -hmm. so i do daily prayers on the internet and i and uh, it's enormously uncomfortable but i preach a sermon once a week to an internet camera i had a big row with the lord it happened last easter uh there's a guy i was sitting at the back of the local anglican church there was a guy doing an easter sermon and i said lord this is good but i could do this too why do you silence me and he spoke to me and mm -hmm. said go home and do it on the internet and i said no, I, I, I've just learned to preach in front of people after 35 years. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I, I have my pride. <laughs> I can't do it to camera. And he said, do it. So I said, okay, there's 42 people in church. If by tomorrow morning you've given me 42 uh, listeners on YouTube, I'll do it the following week. And if there's less than 42, this was a bum idea. And I and I misheard you. <laughs> um, and and the Lord has given me between a hundred and a thousand, depending on quite how exotic the title is. But I have to say, I find it incredibly difficult, and I feel really stupid, and I'm doing it only out of obedience. But but what I have discovered is that um, perhaps part of the future in the church, particularly as in, as in Europe, we we find the authorities bearing down on us. One of the things we ought to be talking about, actually, is how after the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse, the state is lining up to register the church, uh, and and you will we will soon find that only churches that meet the state safeguarding criteria, whatever they are, and they'll they'll they will include being not being homophobic. 
uh, a whole series of things. Only those churches will be able to operate. So there's a level of state control which is coming. And I'm quite sure that one of the things the Lord is preparing us for is for uh, faithful Christians gathering together on the internet where we can speak relatively freely about the faith and i think partly what i'm doing is a preparation for that and that other people will find themselves more widely drawn in but meanwhile it's like a kind of internet monastic community people want to pray and they want to have the word preached yeah it, the internet is you know obviously the ministry of Anchor tv uh falls within this this incredible realm of free content on demand when you need it when you want it uh with whatever we can provide it, it's amazing. Now, you were talking about uh, you can do it now, but one day there's obviously going to be some draconian changes uh, thrust upon the Church of England. And I think part of this commission that's going on is going to certainly be that way, where if you are not a fully affirming church, uh, if you do not conduct uh, gay weddings or transgender weddings or whatever weddings the, uh, the local polity deems fit, you're not a church in our community, in, in our nation. And uh, I think uh, the Church of England is in for a big surprise. Uh, oh, that's a, Ke yeah. Kevin, that is exactly right. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I used to smuggle, I used to smuggle Bibles into the Soviet Union before 89. I'd mm -hmm. also theological books into the, into the Czech Republic because the way the authorities in the Czech Republic had decided to deal with the church was to say, no more ordinations. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll die out within a generation. Now, that's exactly what's going to happen now. In in ICSA, the Independent Inquiry to Child Sexual Abuse, one of the things they said is we better have some proper psychometric tests to weed out people before they can get ordained. And what this meant was, because they're, they're limbering up, it's so clear how they're limbering up, they're limbering up to, to punish, exclude or silence people who believe biblical traditional models of sexuality if you don't believe those you won't be able to get ordained let alone preach so they're going to cut it off both at the level of contemporary practice and at the level of clergy coming in uh, this is this is really serious the real church will have to be the church of the internet i think you're right i remember one of the most disdain conversation i ever had was with a bbc radio reporter and we are in uh Africa it was uh, Uganda at the time. We we're sitting at the top of a hotel, and he quizzed me. He says, "You're a Christian, yeah, yeah. You believe in Noah's Ark?" And he goes through all these Old Testament things. Mm -hmm. And I, I paused for a second. I said, "You're going on me about that when I believe, you know?" And I, I went into this whole thing about Jesus. I believe a guy died on a cross, mm -hmm. and that's going to forgive me my sins. You know, all that stuff is easy if you believe in Jesus. <laughs> you yes. know, and yes. I just remember. You know the disdain and hatred this guy had for you know the concept that i had in my mind uh mm -hmm. of what god was really about and i'm like you know that's this guy is a, a real representation for the polity in england mm -hmm. you know and you and i've talked about free speech before in england and in the pre-show we talked about the ban list where people outside of uh england or britain or uh, the uk who've spoken poorly about Muslims uh, or put Muslims in a bad light or talked bad about Islam have been banned from coming in your country. Now, is that something that they ever apply to citizens? You can't come back in if you uh, uh, badmouth Islam? Well, it's going to be very interesting to see mm -hmm. if, if we get that far. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I don't think, at the, at the moment, there's no way they can stop you if you're a citizen of the country because okay. otherwise, where else could you go? But, um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if if you found yourself subject to some kind of uh, um, order that, that required you not to talk about. I mean, for example, at the moment, um, we have a, a peer called uh, a lord, of the, a lord called Lord Pearson, mm -hmm. um, Lord Peer, Peer of the Realm, Lord. It's, okay, it, sure. it begins yeah. to be confusing. Um, and he stood up in, in the House of Lords and said, uh, we have now had millions of rapes literally the number is millions it, it comes from the police themselves right the, the senior the senior child protection officer of the of the of the metropolitan police has placed the the rapes of white and sikh girls at the hands of muslim rape gangs at over in the millions and he said 222 muslim men have been convicted only since 2005 this is this is a clearly a tip of the iceberg so he said we need to have a discussion in the house of lords and in the house of parliament about what Islam really is. 
and and where Islam gets its authority from because this is this this must be part of Islam we haven't had a single example of a mosque or an imam withdrawing Islamic membership from any of these pedophiles any of these rapists any of the murderers any of the bombers no one within the Muslim community has ever said you are not Muslims you are you know you're banned you're excommunicated you're restricted in the way we would in Christian terms mm -hmm. and, and and in terms of sexual abuse already have and do in Christianity so Pearson is saying look if the Muslims are not um, dis, uh, disowning these people are they is is this islam how can we talk about this and as he said you know we need to talk about islam he was booed in the house of lords people booed him and then he said we have to be able to talk about islam without being accused of of hate crime well there's no you know one lone man in the house of lords is not going to produce a solution we we don't have it and frankly those of us who speak out about islam and its power do so uh, in apprehension that at some point somebody is going to deliver us to the police and say you're committing a hate crime and there's no point in saying there's no hate in my heart uh, I have you know I like Muslims it's just the Quran I have trouble with but because this is a this is this term has been designed by the Marxist left to catch out anybody who doesn't subscribe to whatever politically correct beliefs the state endorses at the time. So what we have, the problem we have is that, if you like, Islam is a kind of fascism from the right that is coming very fast and very hard with, with escalating uh, in demographic terms very quickly indeed. And the left have produced a climate of political fear that doesn't allow us to talk about it without criminalizing us. And in the middle are the Christians. And, and we are going to be we are going to be crushed by these two forces. Uh, the, the, nobody has suggested any way of dealing with with either, let alone both of these two difficulties in Europe. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I think that the Christian community will be driven underground really quite shortly. To give you an example of this, <clears throat> and don't don't do this. Uh, just as an example, this is you know, but don't make this your demonstration. I would love to see somebody videotape themselves doing this because you're going to need the evidence to go out with two people. One placard says Jesus is gay. One says Muhammad is gay and stand outside of Westminster Abbey and uh, find out which person gets arrested first. Uh, it's been done, Kevin. It, what, it's, it's already been done. Been done. Well, it has. Well, uh, the, the, it's on YouTube just very recently. Ah. A group of gay, a group of gay activists. You'll love this. They went to Luton, which is one of the centers of Islamic oh, yeah. hegemony, and they unfolded a placard that said Allah is gay. And uh, it's not the same as Jesus, but but essentially it's, you know, it's blasphemy from the left. Bless them. They lasted 10 seconds. The police surrounded them with a lot of angry local Muslim men. And they said, you have to go. And they said, we're allowed to be here. We're gay. We're LGBT activists. We, we, we get to put our, uh, our propaganda up. And um, the police said, actually, you don't. Um, 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 that's very offensive. You know, Why would it be trying to very offensive. Why could it be? Yeah, it is offensive. Guys, you know, it's not offensive. Why can't I have us? Because it's offensive. I prefer people. How is it offensive? Because people. Yeah, I, I find it offensive. offensive. I'm because sorry. I find it very offensive. I'm offended that people think that Allah is not for gay people as well. That Allah is not for trans people as well. That's not what you're saying on there. Allah is a gay guy. That's not what you're saying on there, is it? That is a gay guy. I'm taking offense to what people are saying to me. It constitutes a public order offense. Okay, and I cannot allow you to display these out here. Okay, people are coming up to us and telling us that it's offensive, and we're potentially going to have a situation on our hands. Okay, where people are going to start becoming injured. Okay, people are going to get injured because people. <laughs> and uh, the reason it was the reason it was so interesting is because, um, as we look at the, the the power struggle between the neo Marxist left and the Islamo fascist right, which is going to win? Liberal secular society is so sure it's going to win no. that it's very that it's very relaxed about it. And I thought this this small event in Luton with the LGBT activists just trying it out for the first time and lasting no more than fifteen seconds made it very clear who's going to win. Yeah, feminism does not chance, stand a, a second's chance against Islam. LGTB doesn't stand a chance versus Islam. Um, it, or Marxism, for that matter. But, uh, you know, interesting. Yeah, and you and I spoke in, in the pre-show. One of my favorite books is 1984. 
And you said, oh, mm-hmm. I love that book too. Well, you know, even though we don't have the Soviet Union anymore and uh, that type of uh, communism going on, except, you know, scattered about, um, it's happening uh, right in front of our eyes. You know, we're being retrained to understand that uh, mm-hmm. Islam is ab- above reproach. And your silly Christianity is an old, forsaken religion, and uh, you need to, to to stack that away. Even though Islam is much harder on uh, the left's ideas than Christianity, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's, it's a huge. It's just. It's such a huge surprise to me that in my lifetime, mm-hmm. this is. I mean, I'm slightly older than you. I certainly look much older than you. But but you got the uh, hair. Uh, <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I, I, I'm just I'm just astonished that even in my lifetime we have reached the stage as quickly as we have, and I have no idea how many years the Lord is going to give me left. But but let's say on average I I, I get another twenty years or so. They're going to be a very hard twenty years indeed. Who does the require... bell toll for? <laughs> <laughs> now that we're talking death, ding ding ding. <laughs> The bell is tolling, Kevin, for sure. Maranatha, Lord, come back soon. Yeah, man. Um, over here in America, we had a, a group of people, uh, part of the uh, ACNA, that are kind of unhappy with uh, mm. GAFCON and the ACNA in regards to women's orders. And they said, listen, for us, it's a losing battle. We either may have to dissolve or go somewhere else. And one of the choices they put into... Uh, their memoranda and speech was maybe the Polish Catholic non-papal church. And I said, Polish I think, National Catholic Church. Sorry. PNCC. <laughs> I'm glad you know. <laughs> and that's why you're on this program. Because I said, I know somebody I could ask about that church. Because I've heard some good things and I've heard some bad things. And I said, I, I really need to, to, to find out from Gavin what he knows about the National Polish Catholic Church. Gavin. I know. I know quite a lot. Okay. <laughs> but you're not Polish. The, the, yeah. Well, actually, I am slightly. I've just had a DNA ch- test that, that tells me that I'm uh, I'm, I'm 15% Jewish and uh, slightly Russian. Wow. And, <laughs> so um, um, I have Jewish ancestors who came through Poland. Okay. So uh, maybe I qualify on that basis. Sure. But more importantly, to the point, uh, yes, the, uh, the, the diocese of... Missionary Diocese of All Saints are not the first people to go and talk to the Polish National Catholic Church or the Nordic Catholic Church, mm-hmm. which uh, are their representatives in Europe and in Norway. Um, they represent uh, Catholic orders outside uh, papal authority, and you might say they have the best of, of both worlds. Um, there's a great they're very nice people they have uh, an entirely authentic uh, sacramental life and if you uh, are if you define yourself by sacramental and episcopal um, propriety then then they they score um, they score 10 out of 10 I think the difficulty is that the the, the PNCC is an ethnic church okay. which has yet which has yet to um, find a new vision that is more than ethnic but theoretically if it set itself out as a broker to say well we will welcome all sacramental anglicans um because because you know okay so excuse me being polemic for a moment but you know the evangelical anglicans protestant anglicans just don't get that if you introduce feminist principles into the church there is no there are no brakes for the for the for the car going down the slope uh, and therefore, at some point or other, once you've done that and changed orders, you, you will continue to have the issues of relativism that we have today. So sacramental Anglicans are saying, well, if if ACNA uh, or if the Orthodox Anglicans don't get that and can't see that, or and even, I'm sorry to say, it's something to laugh at it, mm-hmm. then is there somewhere else we can go? And the PNCC has said, yes, you, you can come here. Um, now, as always, when you move denominations, you need to be sure there are fewer problems where you're going than more problems. Yes, <laughs> that is true. But, but <laughs> it's not it's not for me to tell other people what problems they do or they don't have. The, the big difficulty, I think, is that for those people contemplating, as I certainly have myself, joining the PNCC or, or the, the Nordic Catholic Church, the NCC, you become Anglican Catholics. 
you stop being Catholic Anglicans. Yeah, that's and, good. And what that does is that that kind of breaks fellowship with, you know, with all the Anglican, uh, uh, all the all the affectionate, supportive Anglicanism culture that we've always known. Now, maybe this is our kind of ethnic tribalism. Um, maybe it's just me being anxious about losing my ethnic roots. Um, but you have to be sure that in doing that, you're preparing a platform for the kingdom of heaven and not just your favorite brand of churchmanship. But the difficulty is for the for, for I think uh, sacramental Anglicans that 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 if somewhere like the NCA proves not to be a safe, respected, honorable, and welcome place for them, what it does is it just divides the church more. It it and and. You know, that really ought to be something that's on all of our minds, that, it, that every step down the progressive road, even if it's one that looks you know, nice to our sisters in Christ because that's what they want, that weakens the church really ought to be thought of extremely carefully. I do hope that ANCA, the ACNA gives some further thought to whether or not they, they want to foster a climate that makes it more difficult for sacramental Anglicans to stay part of the body of Christ within Anglicanism. Yeah, I I think this letter probably surprised them. Uh, and, you know, well, what's going on down there? That's kind of part of the church as well, as, you know, going around and making sure everybody's representative and everybody's uh, being ministered to, encouraged, you know, we, we know through Hebrews, we need to encourage one another daily. And mm -hmm. sometimes the ball gets dropped uh, at national churches, local churches, dioceses. Um, it, it's a reality. One of the problems I have is, you know, sometimes we, we, we become so pure and holy in our liturgy and desire and understanding, we become a church of one, the smallest church on <laughs> earth, you know, and the, the Polish church is, is that. It's a small, unique brand uh, that is very ethnic. Uh, they have 80 churches, uh, and they are also, I hate to say it, a dying breed. It, it's a reality on the ground that they are getting smaller. Um, it, it's it's hard to say, but well, God can God God's very good. He's in the resurrection business. He can take dying breeds and oh, bring new life yeah. bring new life into them. I think the, I think the question we have to ask all of ourselves. I mean, me, you know, I, it's one I have to ask too. Uh, is is what you're doing a way of God breathing life into His church? Um, that that's the question we need to ask every time. Uh, the, it's it's entirely possible that the the, the PNCC and the NCC uh, and some of the continuing Anglican churches may find a that the, the the ferment of their coming together brings a new evangelistic life. But the thing is, you cannot have a sacramental life without an enthusiastic, charismatic empowering, and evangelical understanding of the gospel. And what Anglicanism has to be, if it's anything at all. Uh, and Archbishop Foley Beach is, is one of the most notable promulgators of this view. Yes, yes. It has to be fueled by the Holy Spirit. It yeah. has to have a passion for spreading the gospel. And it has to have authentic sacraments. And, and the moment we, we go light on one of those three, we really unnecessarily weaken the body of Christ to our shame and to his as well. Wow, way to finish up! You, you just go for you, know, you don't have home runs over there in England. You you play cricket. What's a what's a home run in cricket? <laughs> <laughs> it's a six. It's, it's a six. When you hit it out of the ground, it's a you score a six. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. I'm Kevin Carlson. <laughs> I'm Gavin Ashenden. You've been listening to episode 382. Jesus is indeed in the resurrection business. May he bring the church back to life and give you great joy this Easter tide. <laughs> <laughs>